Hello, I'm Samantha. Around Thanksgiving time, there's always all these videos going around of people explaining all the things that they're thankful for, and I thought, you know, I like to hear myself talk, so how about I make one of those videos? So, in honor of Thanksgiving, I'm making this video because I am thankful for cancer. So I know it sounds weird, and there are a lot of negative things that have come from my diagnosis, but there's also a lot to be thankful for. Like in a way, I'm super happy that all this actually happened to me because of all the things that I've learned from it. I know that everything happens for a reason, and I don't know what all the reasons are yet, but I figured I'd still make this video and share some of the things that I learned and what cancer has taught me. Some of these things I knew before, actually probably all the things I knew before, but getting cancer has kind of emphasized them in a way or have made me think about them in a different way than I did before. Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just go. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that cancer showed me, it was right off the bat, like I saw it right away, right after my diagnosis. Cancer showed me how much I'm loved. So sort of an anecdote, um, when I graduated high school, I received the best gift I have ever gotten, and that was a scrapbook. Each page of this scrapbook was taken over by a different friend or family member or family friend. Every one of the pages was different, some included long letters, some included old photographs, but in the end I had this wonderful book of stories, inside jokes, and they wished me good luck in college, and they wrote a bunch of things about what they love about me. I've always known that I've had amazing friends and amazing family, but if for some reason I forgot, I always had this scrapbook to be able to look back on. The reason it was such a great gift is just that I knew that all those people put that much time into making something for me. It had a lot of meaning. And then I graduated college and I didn't get another scrapbook. But soon after, I received another gift, and it was a cancer diagnosis. <laughs> if you look back to the very first video that I made on this channel, first of all, I'm a lot more awkward than I am now, so if you think I'm awkward now, go back to that video. Anyway, if you go back to that very first video, I talk a lot about how I didn't realize how my cancer diagnosis would affect so many people around me, and I said, couple times how I didn't know how much people actually cared about me. And trust me, if you're diagnosed with cancer and then people know about it, you're going to know very quickly what you mean to those people. They're going to let you know. I can't even tell you how many people reached out to me, how many people sent cards and presents and a bunch of things that I probably didn't even need. but. You know, it was just the thought of people trying to help and people saying that they would be there for me. Like seriously, I got way too many presents, like I got way too spoiled. How lucky am I to have that many amazing people in my life? It just made me feel really loved and appreciated and I forget that sometimes. And I'm ashamed to say that because I am so, so lucky. But. You know, it's, it's nice to have that reminder, and getting that cancer diagnosis gave me that reminder. So it was, it really was, it was, it was a great gift. Um, I probably would have preferred a scrapbook, but we know how much certain people in our lives mean to us, but we don't actually think about the reverse of that as much, or at least I don't. We don't as much think about what we mean to other people. And that's kind of sad, and it's actually kind of weird if you think about it, because obviously the reverse has to be true. I mean, think about somebody that you really love and somebody that you really need in your life and that you're super thankful for. That person probably feels exactly the same way about you, and there's tons of other people in your life that also feel that way about you. So I'm here to tell you people, the world, I guess, not to forget that. Don't let something crazy that happens to you, something like cancer, be the thing that reminds you of that. Just know that. Okay, so the second thing that cancer taught me that I learned, not right away, but probably soon after I started cancer treatment, cancer taught me how to be selfish. I learned that being selfish to an extent is actually 
a really good thing and a really healthy thing. When I found out that I had cancer, a bunch of problems that I thought were a big deal suddenly weren't a big deal at all. Because the cancer was just so much more of a big deal, I realized how much I worried about small things that don't even matter that I shouldn't even worry about even if I didn't have cancer. I started prioritizing myself a little bit more um, than other people, um, more than I had done before. And I mean, having a disease as serious as cancer really helps that. I really realized that doing things for me was important. I stopped worrying as much about what other people thought about me. I stopped worrying as much about how people would react to the things that I did. Like, no, I don't have to respond to that text message right away. I'm dealing with myself. I don't have to focus all of my energy into maintaining this relationship with whatever person because if they're worth keeping around, they'll understand. I mean, that's how relationships work. Everybody knows that. It's not like an equal thing all the time. Like, sometimes one person has to be the person to pick up the slack and it doesn't always have to be me. It can be the other person this time. So. Before cancer, I didn't really even realize how much of a, quote, people pleaser I was. And if you think about it, it's really dangerous to get like that because it ends up that everything you do is about other people and trying to make sure other people are comfortable and have the things that they need and keeping peace with them. And I'm here to say that all those things are fine, like you should be working towards pleasing people in a certain way. You should be trying to maintain relationships with people and working on your relationships with people. And you should do nice things for people. You should help out your friends and family. But you need to allow yourself to be selfish to a degree. Getting cancer just really let me see how much unnecessary drama I put myself through that didn't matter at all. Some of that is stuff that was obvious. Um, stuff that I knew just by looking back on my life and realizing why did I worry so much about that. But there's smaller things too that are less obvious that you don't even realize because you're constantly doing them. So my advice to you people is to make sure that you focus on what's really going to matter in the end. Don't deal with someone or stay in a situation just because it's what you're used to. Make sure you stand up for yourself and be selfish every once in a while. <laughs> this third thing I probably really started thinking about after I finished my surgery. Cancer taught me to enjoy life. I'm very happy with the way my life has gone. I don't really have very many regrets and I'm very thankful for all the things that have happened to me. Even the mistakes that I've made, I've learned from them. And I'm just really satisfied with how my life has gone so far and I don't really feel like I'm the kind of person that was super negative even before I had cancer. So I think that this attitude really ended up helping me throughout my cancer treatment. Um, it helped me stay positive. But having cancer helps me appreciate things even more. And it's weird to say that I became happier when I got cancer, but it, I mean, it's kind of true. <laughs> When I was going through chemo, I had some really, really horrible days, and that made me appreciate the good days just that much more. You know when you get a cold and you're like, oh, I feel horrible, and I really just took for granted all that time that I was able to breathe out of my nose. <laughs> so it's kind of like that, but when we get a cold, we know that we're gonna get better eventually. It may feel like it drags on for forever, but we know that we're gonna get better and we'll be able to breathe out of our nose again. Like, there's not that much of a worry there. <laughs> but we don't really think about too often how we don't actually know when something's going to happen to us where we won't get better. Getting cancer is like a serious thing and it makes those kinds of thoughts become more real. Like for example, for me, cancer could come back and it could be very aggressive and I could never be myself ever again. But for you, that could be anything. It doesn't have to be cancer. So it's just so important to enjoy the life that you have right now because 
You don't know how long it's going to be like that. And I'm not talking about dying, like that just seems super far away, especially when you're young and you don't have like a serious disease. Yeah, it's true, you don't know how long you're going to be able to live your life, but you also don't know how long you're going to be able to live in your current situation, in your current body, with the current abilities that you have. Or maybe you do know, maybe you do know that, oh, in four years I'm going to be done with college. Always enjoy, always enjoy what you're doing. And everybody says this, everybody gives this advice. Like, I don't know how many times people have told me to enjoy my life and to appreciate what I have at the moment because it could go away and then you'll be sad that you didn't appreciate it more. Maybe it's completely impossible to fully appreciate where you are when you're there but you can try your best. <laughs> so my advice to you people is to enjoy what you have, get yourself to a place where you're happy and enjoy what you're doing and make the most out of your situation even if you don't enjoy what you're doing at that exact point. Be selfish, make yourself happy, and then enjoy life. Okay, so this last one is a big one. <laughs> Cancer taught me about empathy and judging. <laughs> So, I don't care what anyone says. If you don't have cancer, you don't know what it's like to have cancer. I've always felt that I have done a good job of not judging people too much and trying to see things from other people's point of view and having empathy for them and trying to understand their emotions and I thought that I was pretty good at that but then getting cancer, I realized that I'm not. It's not my fault. Everyone's bad at it. No matter how much you think about how something could be affecting somebody, you are not good at it. I'm sorry. You have to accept that. Everyone has to accept that there is no way ever to know what someone is going through. I knew about cancer before I had cancer. I felt sorry for people who were going through it and I felt sorry for their families, but I didn't know anything. Getting cancer showed me how much I didn't know. And then I thought, well, this doesn't just apply to cancer. This applies to literally everything. I can't know how another person feels. I can think about what I would do if I was in their situation, but it doesn't matter. I don't know, and there's no way for me to know what another person is going through. People are really good at realizing that other people don't know what they're feeling. I can sit here and be mad at all of you for not understanding what I'm going through and for trying to understand what I'm going through but not quite getting it and for giving me advice even though I don't need the advice because you could never understand. I'm the only person that's in my situation. So I could sit here and I could be mad at you for that or I could recognize that you are trying. You're trying to understand. It's very easy for people to see like, oh man, that person doesn't understand me. But we don't stop and think about as much how we don't understand other people. No matter how good I thought I was at seeing things from other people's point of view, there's no possible way to do that, but I can try. And I think that's what everyone needs to do. I think we all need to try. You need to understand that people will never understand you fully, and you need to understand that you won't understand someone else fully. And if we all can figure that out and we can recognize that, maybe we can like come together and stop yelling at each other all the time. <laughs> I know that's a long shot and that probably won't happen. So no matter how much I try not to be judgmental, I still am. And so is everybody. <laughs> you can be like, man, I can't believe that person judges me for blank. So then maybe you don't judge other people on blank, but you're probably still judging people on something else. It's impossible not to judge someone, but we can do our best to try not to. So yeah, that's my advice. Try not to, because you never know what people are going through, and you can't know what people are going through, and people can't know what you're going through, but they can try, and you can try, and
and that's the best we can do. Okay, so that is all. Those are just some of the things that cancer has taught me. Obviously, it has taught me a lot more. So I hope that you understand why I'm thankful for cancer. Probably a lot of you understand where I'm coming from on this. Obviously, you don't mean that cancer is great. Um, obviously, it sucks. But I learned so much from being diagnosed with cancer that I probably wouldn't have otherwise learned. So yes, happy Thanksgiving. I'm very thankful for all the things that I've said in this video. I'm thankful for cancer. I'm thankful for my friends and for my family. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you think it'll help someone, share it with them. Also subscribe to follow along with my cancer adventures and follow me on Instagram for more updates. Yep, that's all. Bye.